Hey golfers, it's Thomas Campbell, Master Club Fitter at Second Swing. Today I'm going to continue on with the altitude test. Recently I did an iron comparison comparing altitude changes from sea level all the way up to 9680 feet. That is the highest elevated golf course in the United States. That is Mount Massive in Colorado. So really kind of be an interesting test today with driver because we know we all want to hit the ball as far as we possibly can and it's kind of interesting to see how far the tour pros do hit it at a higher altitude here too so for today's test i'm going to do the exact same thing as i did, did with the irons i'm going to hit shots at sea level 2,000 feet 4,000 feet 6,000 feet 8,000 feet and then 9680 there as well so we've got a range from golf courses in florida at sea level all the way to Mount Massive up in the mountains here too. So I'm going to hit some shots right away and take a look at some numbers. Before I do that, please make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel. You've got plenty of other great content coming away like this in the future. Let's hit some drivers. Before starting out, I just had to switch our TrackMan settings from 830 feet, which is the elevation level here in the Twin Cities in Minnesota. Switch it back to sea level, we'll start at sea level, and then we'll work our way up from there. All right, that's the furthest drive I have ever hit on TrackMan, 335.3. Feel like I didn't quite even catch that one, and you'll notice that my club speed's not even close to my absolute max, what I've been doing with this super speed golf training here too. So 4,000 feet right now has got me to the furthest distance I've ever hit my driver. Let's see what happens as we continue to keep climbing up. Okay, so we've got some data where my club speed with the drivers remain within one mile an hour of each other. To finish off, I'm just gonna really try and go after a couple, try and increase my attack angle a little bit, just kinda see if I can pull it off. Now, I'm actually already pretty tired here, so I may not be successful, but let's you know, take a look and see if I'm able to hit the ball any further by really going after it here. That's pretty deep. So if I was playing at this golf course in Colorado at 9680 feet, that's pretty impressive. 382 yards. Yikes. See if I got a couple more left in me. All right, that one was a little bit spinnier. Let's take a look at the numbers. I'm getting pretty tired here. But we did get my club speed over 115 today, so that's pretty impressive. So the super speed stuff is definitely working for me. But let's take a look at some numbers. 
Okay, I've got the numbers in front of me. Let's make a quick summarization here with regards to how elevation affects distance with a driver. So let's take a look at some numbers. As I mentioned, my club speed was within about one mile an hour uh, difference there. So between 111 and 112 miles an hour, with the exception of those last two swings where I really went after it, where I was almost pushing 115 on average. And we'll talk about those at the end. But let's take a look. So club data is not going to change too much. So club speed, ball speed, smash factor, we'll notice, are all very, very similar. We'll notice right across the board there, smash factor of 1.49 with every single club. So that's really not going to change at all. Let's take a look at the, at the distance numbers and the height and then kind of see if there's anything that really stands out to us at all. So at sea level, I was carrying the ball 287.7 going 310 yards. Pretty good, pretty, pretty good numbers overall. I'm, I'm pretty happy with that. My height was about 117 feet in the air. Pretty, pretty solid numbers there for a driver. We'll notice if we take a look and see if this goes in the right trend. So at 2,000 feet, we picked up 10 yards carry distance. 4,000 feet, we picked up another 10 yards carry distance. 6,000 feet, we picked up nine yards carry distance. 8,000 feet, another five yards of carry distance, and then another 1,680 feet, we picked up about three yards more carry distance there too. So it's kind of interesting to see those increments change from sea level to 2,000 feet to 4,000 feet, how we noticed that that carry distance was kind of consistently about 10 yards of distance. Now, if we look at the total distance, that started to kind of change up a little bit there as well. So we picked up about 16 yards from sea level to 2,000 feet. Picked up another 18 yards from 2,000 feet to 4,000 feet. Picked up another 20 yards from 4,000 feet to 6,000 feet. And then picked up about another 10 yards from 6,000 to 8,000 feet. So it's kind of interesting how very similar trends for every 2,000 feet that we increase the elevation by until we reached about six to seven thousand feet and then we'll notice maybe not quite the same amount of trends across the board there. If we take a look at height, now we do know that air density when you have a high, higher elevation definitely changes. So normally you would expect that the ball will start to fly a little bit lower at a higher altitude. Well, me being a human and knowing that, kind of changed my attack angle up a little bit. So if we take a look at when I really went after it here, we'll notice at 96.80 when I had my max speed, notice my attack angle was 5.9 degrees up. And then my height was the highest there too. So I was really maximizing the distance by getting my height up, by hitting up on the ball, knowing that if I can get that ball to carry further, knowing that the air density may drop the ball down a little bit, I was really able to maximize a lot of distance. So that's why that at that elevation that I was hitting the ball the highest there. But in general sense, the ball will fly a little higher at sea level. And then as you go up in elevation, the air density will bring the ball kind of down there a little bit. And that's going to see if we see that trend here with the landing angle. So we can see here the landing angle with at sea level was 40 degrees. And then we'll notice here, or we're around about 36, 37 degrees at 6,000, 4,000, 2,000 feet. Then we'll notice at 8,000, it got even shallower. And then at 96.80, it got even shallow there as well. But then I came along and I decided I wanted to hit the ball as far as I possibly could. So I swung out of my shoes a little bit. Uh, generate a little bit more speed, so my club speed wasn't the same as the others. So I tried to really maximize the distance I could get. Got my launch angle up a little bit. I got my attack angle up a little bit there. And we'll notice what happened. So attack angle went to 5.9, and we'll notice the height. So we'll notice I was able to carry the ball 344 yards, going 376 yards. So really interesting to take a look at it. You can see over here on the right side the, the kind of dispersion, how it changes based on elevation changes there as well. We've got that one that I absolutely smoked and that was 382.2 yards. 
Love to play that golf course. Love to play a golf a hole that's about 380 yards and, and drive it. That'd be really, really fun to go play uh, up, in, um, up in Colorado and play the Mount Massive golf course there too. So kind of really interesting data. It's kind of across the board, kind of what I would expect. We notice general trends. So we notice the carry distance went up by about 10 yards every 2,000 feet. Keep in mind, to really make the most of this, you do have to have a lot of club speed. If you don't have as much speed as a Tour Pro has, you will not see the same increases, so you may not see that 10 yard increase. It may be, it may be eight yards, it may be seven yards, but you will see a little bit more carry distance if you are able to keep the ball up in the air. If you're able to keep the ball up in the air, that is really going to help you out there too. So I really hope you liked this series on altitude. We tested the seven iron in a different video and then we just did driver here today. Really impressive data. Um, make sure you know what the altitude is where you're playing your golf because it can definitely change a lot. So whether you're playing in Arizona, playing Colorado, some, some altitude, playing Utah, or even if you're playing at sea level in Florida or in California, it makes a huge difference as we can see. So it really changes up your distances across the board. So thanks for watching today. I really hope you enjoy this content. Stay tuned. We'll have plenty more other great content coming your way in the future. And make sure you subscribe to our channel. Make sure you click that subscription button if you haven't already. Thanks for watching.